Since the beginning of the war, Hamas says that more than 33,000 Palestinians have been killed. According to the US government, that includes 25,000 women and children. The Israeli government disputes these figures. Well, the head of the Palestinian mission to the UK, Ambassador Hussam Zomlot, is in the studio with me tonight. Thank you for coming in to speak to us here at Sky News. Um, six months on, it's a time for a reflection. We were just speaking there about the figures. Behind those figures, of course, are people. What are the people of Gaza going through right now? Yeah, but why did you have to say uh, that uh, the numbers are disputed? Why do we have to say always that these are Hamas numbers? These are international organizations that are there and have vetted these numbers. And by the way, the number 33,000 is a big underestimation. We are waiting for the worst because there are thousands of people who are still under the rubble, uncounted for. There are thousands who are missing. So this is the absolute minimum number. Uh, uh, more than 100,000 Palestinians. Uh, maimed, I, uh... maimed, maimed and killed. And this, no, this is very important, Saima. Always we are interrogated, always our story is disputed, and always the story of the occupier, the aggressor, the colonizer, the besieger is taken for granted. It's unacceptable. This uh, is unacceptable. I appreciate what you're saying. Unacceptable. What, what we and try to do Nations, is include the United everyone's Nations, perspective. No, 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 no. Media but I appreciate what you're saying. The United Nations often says the, the mass figures are, are true to and, and what And the United they Nations present. often say that Israel's figures are not true, that Israel uses propaganda. That's the UN. So this is what we have to portray to our viewers, not to portray a situation where there is a dispute about real people who have been murdered by Israel by the thousands. Among those people, there are more than 13,000 children. This is the yeah. highest number of children murdered in any given conflict. The highest number of doctors, the highest number of journalists, the highest number of hospitals, schools. Is, uh, Israel has been engaged for six months in genocide. It's committing genocide. And then you have the International Court of Justice, the highest the highest score that says there the is a plausible genocide. I, I want to and put then, to you something that dispute. the uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has said today that he believes the achievements of the war have been great. What do you say to that? Yeah, that what he means by being great, that is Netanyahu, is murdering 33,000 innocent people, mostly the vast majority of whom are women and children. What he means by great is the educide, that is the complete demolition of the Palestinian education system. We have 625,000 Palestinian school uh, uh, children who are out of education for the last six months. What he means is the devastation of our health sector. 36 hospitals are either totally or partially destroyed. What he means is the, uh, uh, the complete annihilation of a nation of a people. That's what he means by success. And from day one, Saima, we said that Netanyahu, Israel, and its establishment will be after our people. And from day one, we want every Western politician who has given Israel the green light, the carte blanche to commit the genocide. Oh, it's interesting you happening. say that. Today, the and British Foreign Secretary, Lord Cameron, has uh, uh, he's announced a, another aid package uh, for humanitarian assistance. But what I want to talk to you about is the fact that he's saying that he has made clear to Israel that support from the United Kingdom is no longer unconditional. It is now conditional. Uh, you are, of course, the head of the Palestinian mission in the UK. What are you discussing behind the scenes with the United Kingdom? And are they doing enough? That, no, they're not doing enough. And it's too little, too late, and we want to see actions, not words. We are done with words and statements and sympathies. Oh, it hurt us to see all these children being killed. Israel should not have killed the seven aid workers, including three uh, British citizens. These words have been interpreted in Israel as just hollow words. We need action. The UK well, has what got kind to... of action? What the... do you want to see happen? First, the UK has to impose an arms embargo immediately. Once the highest court on earth says that it is plausible that Israel has committed genocide and is committing genocide six months on, and that Israel is now officially on trial for genocide, the conversation should have been over. Arms embargo, Israel must be deseated from the United Nations because there was a Security Council resolution that the UK government voted for for an immediate ceasefire. And since then, Israel has doubled down 
on its prevention of food, on the famine that is imposed on our people in Gaza, and the use of disease as a weapon of war. And therefore, you know, the list of sanctions are very well known. Otherwise, the Israelis will not listen. Well, what about the ceasefire talks that are carrying on right now? Of course, a, a number of times it's been mentioned that if the hostages are returned, there may be hope for a longer-term ceasefire, not just a humanitarian pause. Yes. I, I appreciate you don't represent Hamas, no. but no, no, there, no, is, no, there no, is the no, fact no, that the hostages were no, taken and 1,200 no. Israelis were killed. Yeah, I, but I, I represent the Palestinian people. I represent my people. And we have 7,000 hostages in Israeli detentions. Most of them without trial, without charge. Many of them are children. Many of them are women and girls. The United Nations came up with a report only recently about the sexual violence and rape against our women in Israeli detention. And, and most of those people were taken hostage just after the 7th of October in the last six months. 4,000 of them are from the West Bank. This morning, an Israeli doctor came up with a, a damning report, damning report about and beautician being done against Palestinian hostages because of the way Israel cuffs them. Numerous cases of a uh, uh, um, you know, people losing their limbs. Yeah. And uh, now many of which still uh, need to be investigated uh, independently. Investigated. Journalists the, need to go uh, in those, uh, and, and look at a question. I, I, we're running out of time and I have those more Those are questions. hostages. Palestinians have hostages in Israeli detentions by thousands. They must I, be I, released. I hear you. I want to put to you that tonight, um, Yov Galant has released a statement saying that Although Israel has withdrawn troops from southern Gaza, they've left just one brigade there. They're saying that um, they, the troops are left there to prepare for future operations, including in Rafa. How concerned are you about that? Very concerned. It's very obvious. Israel, this government, the military, they want to see a perpetual aggression against our pe uh, people. A an unending, never-ending, open-ended war and, and genocide against our people. So this is what he's saying. They leave this area, they come back from the other door, they will continue the bombardment, they will continue the, the incursions into major Palestinian cities. Netanyahu knows that the only way he can maintain his career and his job is by continuing killing Palestinians, and the world is doing nothing about it. And six okay. months on... Uh, what about and the six I, I want to ask you about the Palestinian Authority and, and look at, why, at the wider picture now. It has been conspicuous in its absence since October the 7th, since the um, war in Gaza as well, the airstrikes and the ground incursion. We know that, of course, there's been a change in, in government um, uh, with the PA and, and more different fatter members have come in. Where are they in all of this? Well, we, we, we are not the problem, Simon. We have national institutions, we have the PLO that represents all Palestinians. Its political platform is in perfect line with the international community for a state of Palestine on the 1967 borders. We have a state of Palestine in the international system in the UN, recognized by the majority of the world, except few countries, the UK and the US. And we have a new government that will have one main task to provide for our people in Gaza and the West Bank, including Jerusalem. The, the, the are, are they involved the, in talks the, the, with you know, uh, Israel the, the, and Qatar? The, 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 the problem is not in the, in the Palestinian side. We have all what it takes to make sure that our people are provided for and protected. The issue is the root cause. History did not begin on the 7th of October. That's why the focus all the time. And that's why, Saima, this is an opportunity after six months of genocide that is ongoing to review what happened since the beginning of this and how the media has portrayed all of this and how the media have played into the genocide by talking about the 40 beheaded babies, remember? By talking well, about... We, we've debunked talking, all of those. You, you, so no, you haven't. I haven't seen... We have absolutely an apology, debunked those. ...an apology from the mainstream media in the We UK. have debunked those issues and, and we want to move but on. But it has led to where we are today and where we need to discuss is the root cause of this. We need to discuss the 6th of October. We want to make sure that this tragedy is not repeated and the only way we do so is by turning this tragedy into a momentum towards ending the root cause of all this, which is Israel's occupation, colonization. This is high time that the international community, including the UK, comes out and say, this is it. This is the moment when we implement our own policy, which is an end of Israel's occupation, a state of Palestine on the 1967 borders, with East Jerusalem as its capital, and the right of Palestinian refugees to go back to their homes and properties. Hassam Zomlot, uh, head of the Palestinian mission to the United Kingdom, thanks very much indeed for coming in to speak to us here on Sky News.